Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Oh folks, we're out on this lake today. It's late summer, early fall, and we're out here fishing for largemouth bass. Now we've got a, a, some bass located. We've got a few smaller ones. I've got a buoy out here. And this time of the year, with the water temperature starting to drop, actually the, the water temperature in the last couple of weeks has dropped about uh, 10 degrees or so. So the water's starting to cool off a little bit. And this is the time of the year, depending on the time of the day and cloud cover, winds, things like that, you'll find those bass sometimes up shallow, sometimes in the deeper water. Now today we've actually worked in a sunken island on this lake. And sunken islands are great, you know, for just about all species of fish. But what we're looking for today is some good largemouth bass. And what I'm doing is I'm working the edges of this particular sunken island. It's really thick vegetation up on top and I'm working more of the edges of the vegetation. But what I also have done, I've actually flipped out my tube jig and I'll show you that in just a moment here, right up on top and then just kind of use it almost as a jerk bait and jerking it back. And I've caught a few smaller fish, but what we're trying to do is locate some of those bigger fish. And so a lot of times those bigger fish, especially as you get out end of the day now and, and we're approaching uh, oh, 11 o'clock in the morning or so, so the sun is starting to get pretty high in the sky. Those bigger fish are going to be hanging out in that deeper water. Now, since you're fishing on the edge of the weeds, since the bass like to hang around the weeds, you're going to get hooked up on a few weeds here. I'm going to put out a different tube here because this one is kind of getting eaten up here. I'm using an eighth ounce jig for my, t for my, uh, I'm, to, to attach my tube to. And a small jig. Now, this is the reason I'm using this, is that the reason I'm using a tube jig and using such a light one is that I can skim that, this is a tube right here. I can skim that tube over the top of that shallow water. Now remember, with, the, with that plastic bait like that, and this is a Berkeley power bait, it's a three inch power tube, and you just hook it like this and bring it up on that collar. And if you're fishing these kind of jigs and these kind of tubes, you want to make sure that you, uh, you want to make sure that you, it has a collar on there so you can snuff it right up. Now, as you can see here, I can make that weedless if I want to. That's the nice thing about using a uh, small eighth ounce jig like this is that I can make it fairly weedless. You don't have to, but you sure can. And that plastic is soft enough where you can kind of push that, that uh, hook right through the top and the bass will have no problem with it. So now what I did was I pitched it out there on the edge of those weeds and you'll feel little tick, tick, ticks. Those are crappies, those are sunfish, perch. But what you're looking for with the bass, once in a while they're gonna knock it pretty good, but a lot of the times you'll just see your line move. So it's really important. You've heard me talk about this walleye fishing. But it's really important, especially bass fishing, to watch that line because that bass will pick up that bait and go to the side. It'll move your line to the side. You might not even feel them picking up. Remember, they got a big mouth. They'll just flare their gills and that bait will suck right in. And so if you see that, if you see that line move, that means a bass has picked it up. You want to tighten up that line and then really slam it home. And then the key then, folks, bass fishing even these deep water bass, is that they're gonna come up out of the water on you many times. So if you start seeing your line coming up out of the water like this, you know that fish is getting ready to jump. And there's a couple things you can do is try to keep the end of your rod tip down more, or just for sure make, sh that, uh, make sure that you've got that line good and tight. Now I'm getting a few crappies or sunnies or something just kinda twitching the bait there. And you, the key here is working the bait slow. With water temperature starting to fall and it'll continue to fall now as we get into you know mid and late September into October and those bass, the colder that water gets, a little more lethargic those fish get. I'll flip that out there again. And uh, so you want to work it slow. 
unless you're flipping it up on top there. And that shallow water up on top, if you fish that too slow, all you're gonna do is get a bunch of weeds. So then you gotta kind of jerk it through there and get a reaction bite from some of those fish. Oh, that, that was a fish there and I missed him. Okay, yep, that was definitely a bass holding on and I missed him. So I'm gonna flip back in that same spot there. And again, it's, it's hard sometimes, folks. It's gonna feel like a weed, but when, if you feel some tension on there, kind of hold your rod tip up and if it's a fish, most of the time they'll give you a little bit of a head shake. And if it's a fish, then boy, whack it. Give them the good hook set. I'm working through some weeds there. Yeah, now, in, work it slow through the weeds and slowly pull it off, because a lot of times when that bait drops off that weed and falls back towards the bottom, that's when those fish will, will hit that bait. And it's a patient person's game, especially this time of the year. But you gotta work real methodically, work an entire area, and if you make fish contact, then you gotta throw out a buoy, because bass, are, they school up, like walleyes do, they'll school up, and if you catch one, there's a good chance you're gonna catch more. Stay tuned, there's more largemouth bass fishing still to come. Welcome back everyone to the fishing scene. Well, as you can see, the clouds have kind of moved in here a little bit, so that should help fishing just a tad. Wind speed, and we have a southwest wind uh, around 10 miles per hour, so not too bad. Water temperature is 72 degrees, so we've dropped uh, eight, nine degrees or so. It's warmed up a little bit since we first got out here. Air temperature is about 70, and water clarity, very, very clear today. So that's why, uh, you want to really be quiet when you're out here on the water. And that's why also I'm fishing with six pound test line. You're thinking for bass, six pound test line? Well, let me tell you folks, in clear water like this, it can make a huge, huge difference. I know you watch all the, uh, the bass shows on television. You see these guys using these big old bait casting rods and you know the, the short, stiff rods that uh, are like a telephone pole and you know, 20, 30 pound test line. Well, when you're fishing in real thick cover, you may have to do that, but we're kind of fishing out on the edge of the weeds. So the lighter sometimes, the better you can, uh, you'll be on catching those bass, especially in this clear water. And a major cold front had just come through about three days ago, so I think the bass are still feeling the effects of that a little bit. Okay, come here, buddy. I think my end of my rod tip is, oh, hold on here, folks. My rod line got wrapped around the end of my rod tip here. That's not good when you got a bass on. Oh, boy. Well, I can't mess with it now. Let's hopefully I can reel him in. There he comes. That'll happen every once in a while. There he is. Eh, not a big bass, but still fun to catch. Oh, yeah, come here, buddy. There Come here, pal. There we go. Hey, not about a palm bass there, folks. I went to a little bit bigger jig here. I've got actually a quarter ounce jig on now because we're catching these fish. They seem to have moved out off the, the top of that sunken island and are now out in that deeper water. So I'm using a little bigger jig oh, to make sure I get down. I hit him up good. There we go. Get him back in the water. There you go, buddy. Okay. When this happens, folks, on these, like tubes or any kind of plastic bait that you use, <clears throat> they're gonna slide down, so what you wanna make sure you do is just push it back up there again, and uh, you're ready to go. Now, I gotta check out my line. Now, this happens sometimes. You'll get that line, for some reason, will get wrapped around, and don't ask me how this happened, but uh, it kinda got wrapped through here. I'm luckily, I got that, luckily that wasn't a big, big fish. It wanted to take off and run a lot, because. Um, it, I got that wrapped up in here. Now I really got myself wrapped up in here. Let's see. See which way that, okay. Now we're doing good. Okay. Good deal. I'll get us back up to where I want to be here. And again, we're just pitching that jig out, letting it hit the bottom, and just slowly lifting and letting it fall, lifting, let it fall. And uh, you might not feel 
a real big bunk, you might just feel a little heaviness or watch the line. As I mentioned before, bass fishing, you got to watch your line, especially when you're fishing these types of baits that we're doing today. You got to watch that line. It moves from side to side and bingo, that's when you want to get them. Lift real slow, then drop your rod tip back, and then reel in that slack. When you've reeled it in, lift it back up again. And drop her back. Now like here, okay, I can feel it coming up a weed here. So you just kind of work it off that weed and let it fall back. And a lot of times there, it just came off of it. Bass on, baby. Bass on. Come on. Come to Papa. Come on, buddy. There he's coming. Come on, buddy. Yeah, not a, another, not a very big one, but no. come here, pal. Not bad. Oh, come here, guy. With bass, you can lip them. That's how I usually do. Even on the smaller ones, I'll just kind of lip them a little bit. You had him hooked there good. And again, I, I always practice catch and release with bass, folks. It's just one of those things in the northern part of the country. If you don't put these bass back, you know, they don't have a chance to get big. And boy, they're so much fun to catch, and they're really not that good to eat. Now, if you're going to eat some, though, a bass this size would probably be the kind you'd want to eat. Put him back in there. There, no harm done at all. Done at all. And what you want to make sure you do is take that tube then and slide it back up to the jig there. That's why it's so important to use a, uh, a jig with a collar on it. And let me just show you quick here what I mean by the collar. That collar is on that jig. It's got that little bit of a lump right there before the uh, jig meets the uh, hook. And that'll help hold on that piece of plastic a little bit better. You don't have to have it, but it will hold it on just a little bit better. So I've got that rigged up. I'll swim right where I want to be depth-wise. I'll get her pitch back out there. And I'll be back with more of the fishing scene coming up after this. I'm just dropping that jig out there, pitching a little bit. Oh, baby. This is a nice fish, folks. This is a nice fish. It's coming up. I can see my line coming up. I don't know if it's gonna come out of the water. Oh, yeah. oh! oh folks, that was a nice bass. Holy cow. I don't know what camera gal Raina got it on there or not, but boy, that was a nice fish. Now there, I'm glad that happened to be honest with you because that's the key to bass fishing. I saw that line starting to come up. Now what I should have done, I should have maybe stuck that rod down in the water, right down in the water, because I knew it was a big fish. Should have stuck it down in the water, and that way it would have a tendency to keep that bass down in, or I should have made sure that my line was really tight. And I thought I had it pretty tight, but obviously not tight enough. So again, I can't emphasize how important it is when you set that hook to really slam that hook home, because if you don't, just like that, a big old bass, and that was a good sized bass for, for northern Minnesota, let me tell you. They come out of the water like that, and it's amazing. Boom, that jig almost hit Rainer right in the head. Well, we'll get back out there and, and do it again. My tube came off, and the whole kit and caboodle. As long as we're talking about that, you know, we're, uh, we've been using this uh, kind of this blue uh, rainbow color jig with a white tube, but it's also good to have a couple other rods rigged up and ready to go. Just in case this one isn't producing, you can uh, grab another rod and fling it out there. I've got a couple other rods ready to go, one with a, a, a jig with the hair on it and uh, another one with a little smaller jig that's got a different color type of, of uh, plastic on there. So if you have those ready to go, then you can just pitch them out there and again, that's uh, less time you have to be 
goofing around with that, you can be out there fishing. There's a fish right there. Yes! We don't need them though today! Come on! This isn't as big as that last one, but it's still it's a bass and they are fun to catch. Going underneath the boat here. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Hey, not a big fish, but hey, I'm telling you, I'll just kind of reach him in here. All right, I'll tell you, bass fishing folks, man, if the walleye bite is tough, and it has been lately, I'll be honest with you. I got that one hooked good. Um, well, I'll tell you what, switch gears and go after bass. I mean, this is a little guy, but there's big bass all over on lakes all across the upper Midwest. Some of the best bass fishing in the country is found in the state of Minnesota, and I'm not kidding you. And here in northern Minnesota, the bass do not get to play like all the other fish do. And let me tell you, they are the, one of the best fighting fish than you can imagine. And there's plenty of them on just about all area lakes in northern Minnesota. And don't forget, there's smallmouth bass in a number of lakes around the area too, so uh, they can also are a great fighting fish. Got my jig back on there and flip her back out there. Now when you pitch it back out there, again, make sure that you don't start jigging it right away unless you're up there in that shallow top of the hump. Then you gotta do that quickly, kind of use it as a jerk bait and get it across the top of the weeds. But we're out here in 17, 18 feet of water now on the deep edge of the weeds. So cast it out there. And since I casted it, I've been talking to you, I have not moved my reel at all. That bait is now on the bottom, and then just slowly lift and let it fall back down. Slowly lift and let it fall back down. And again, remember, because you're using a three inch type of tube on there, it's pretty buoyant. So you're gonna have to take a little, it takes a little bit longer for that to sink to the bottom. Okay, my line's moving. Tighten it up, Dick. There! Oh, baby! Come on! This is a nice fish, folks. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on. He's coming up. I'm gonna try to get, keep my rod down. He's coming up. There oh, Keep that thing. Oh, man, he's big. He couldn't even come all the way out of the water. He's too fat. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, take my drag up just a hair. There he comes. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on. It's a nice bass, folks. Nice bass. Oh, yeah. Let me spit that too, but yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. Folks, look at that bass. Look at the belly on that puppy, huh? That is one nice Minnesota bass, huh? Look at that, folks. Wow, that's one healthy fish. We're gonna get that big gal back in the water. Come on, honey. Good job, baby. Come on. There you go. There you go, all right. Oh man, huh, folks, was that fun or what? I'm telling you, folks, there are bass like that all over northern Minnesota, all over the upper Midwest, and they get even bigger than that. Let me get another two back on there. I've got one right here. Wow, I'm telling you, that's got my heart beating real quick. All right. Got that back out there. A little tangled up in the end, there we go. Flip that baby out there. Whew, that's got me shaking. Oh. One picked it up and then he dropped it. There goes my line tight. Yes! Oh! Come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is fun. There he comes. All right. 
Come on, Mr. Bass. Come on, Mr. Bass. I'll just do the old Roland Martin thing here. Flip him in the boat like that. Hey, folks, bass fishing in northern Minnesota. I'm telling you, it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, nice fish. We'll get her back in the water here. Hey, folks, please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. Thanks for joining me today on the fishing scene. I'll see you out here on the water.